Well, good morning, Cedar Point Church. Would you guys stand with us today? Who's glad to be in church this morning? Amen, me too. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a world beyond. All creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. Oh, we will not be moved when the earth gives way, for the risen one is overcome. Every, every fear is an empty He shall reign forever, strongholds now surrender for the Lord, our God has overcome. Who can be against us, Jesus, our defender, He is Lord, He has overcome. He shall, he shall reign forever, strongholds. Today, church. Amen. Lord, we welcome you into this place right now, Father. God, you are the way maker. And we give you all the praise. We lay all the distractions of this world just behind us. We lay those down. We just focus on you and you alone. And we give you all the glory this morning. All we have.
never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Come on, church, let's sing that again. distractions of life behind us. God, we focus on you and you alone. We invite you into this place just to do a work in each and every one of us. God, soften our hearts, Lord. Just prepare us for your presence, God. And we sing this together. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. 
come together, you know, together corporately, and, and we can worship God in our home, we can, we can do it during the week in our car, and different things, but there's some, there is something about gathering together in this community of people that we recognize in all of our differences, we recognize our need for Jesus, that's the one thing we all have in common, right? I mean, you know, we may like different music, we may dress in a different way, we may, we may like tattoos, we may not like tattoos, it none of that matters. What matters is who is Jesus to us? So that's the thing that matters right there. And so, you know, we have that. And there's just those moments of surrender. And, and I know in my own life, and I, I don't think we're different. I mean, I think, you know, well, yeah, you're a pastor. Yeah, but I'm a person, too. And so there are things in my life sometimes that I hang on to. And not always necessarily sin. Sometimes it's sin. A lot of times just stuff I want to control. And, and I want to be a part of the outcome. And I'm afraid of letting go because, I you know, I don't know what God's going to do with it. You know, he may ask me to, to give up some things, to turn loose of some things, to change some things and and you know sometimes I'm like I don't know if I want to do that but in moments like this when we get in his presence collectively together and he begins to speak to our hearts and he begins to deal with us and sometimes we have an opportunity to say I trust you I trust you Jesus so let's just take that moment right now Lord I trust you 
Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, we do trust you with our lives, with our relationships, with our past, with our present, and with our future. Jesus, we trust you with all of it. It's all yours. So this is where we surrender. And we, we just lay it all down right here in this moment. We give it up right here because we're yours. And so I pray that, Lord, because you're just so good and you're so great. And one of the ways you demonstrate your greatness is through your goodness. And so we love you. And because you are so great, we honor you and we celebrate you in this moment. We take this opportunity, Jesus, to acknowledge who you are and to acknowledge your presence here. Have your way in this place. More importantly, have your way in us. Holy Spirit, just move in us and through us and in this moment to rest upon us, to set upon us. And because you're the story changer, Jesus, I declare, and you're here, I declare that this is a story changing place. I pray the stories would be changed today. I pray that every seat would be full of people because people matter to you. And I call this a growing church. I pray for our nation. I pray that the local church would be lifted up that it would, they would embrace the call and the mission that you've given it, Jesus. Lord, use me today. Help me to say things once again that would speak into people's lives. To let them know that you see them. That you know them. That you're not indifferent to them. They matter to you. And you're not mad at them. And so, Lord, because we trust you, we just commit all of these things into your hands. To speak to us however you want. To deal with us about whatever you want. Because your love is so great, we can confidently and boldly ask for all of this in Jesus' name. And together we can all say, amen. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in church today? Yeah, man, I'm telling you, we're glad you're here. You know, one of the things we do every year is that we, you know, I, several years ago when I was in youth ministry, I believe that the Lord gave me a God thought. You know what those are? Sometimes you, you, know, you know it's not you because you wouldn't normally think this way. And he just dealt with me, he said, like, if you'll... I was really frustrated because in our student ministry, I didn't feel like when I was youth minister in New Mexico, I didn't feel like we were reaching kids. And I was like, man, and he just, this God thought came. And he's like, if you'll reach people that people aren't waiting in line to reach, he said, I'll help you reach people. And so you know, one of the areas that we, that really matter to us is we want to reach out to those that are incarcerated. And one of the things that happens every year is that we have a friend of ours named Steve Bradshaw that comes and he shares about us giving, giving us an opportunity to help them buy socks for prisoners. We did this um, a couple of years ago. We've done it every year for the last several years. And, and a couple of years ago, I got to go into Rogers County with them and hand out socks. We had to lead somebody to the Lord. And then last year, as I was sharing that, one of uh, the ladies that was incarcerated at the time, she yelled out something. I'm like, and when you're in church, if you're the minister, if you want to unearth, uh, you know, unsettle him, yell out stuff, okay? And so somebody, I'm like, oh, what's that? And she said, I was in there last year when you guys gave out socks. And she still goes to church here to this day. And so we had an impact there. We're having an impact. And so, yeah. So in just a moment, I'm going to give Steve an opportunity to come up and share with you for just a minute. And then when he's done, we're going to receive a special offering for what he's doing. So we're going to receive two offerings. They won for that and later on for our regular tithes and offerings. And so if you want to give towards us, help give uh, socks. If you're, if you're still a check writer, then you can make this out to Cedar Point and this one, and it'll go towards that or cash. Or we have a space on our digital giving for that, but everything that you give in this particular one will go towards that. Steve, come on up here, man, and share your heart and what you're doing. Let's give Steve a hand as he comes forward here. Love you, buddy. Such a blessing to be with you guys again, to see all of you and see the smiling faces, although I can't see very much right now. It's awful bright up here. It's a blessing to be with you. I want to just share with you some of the results that we've had happen at uh, Dick Connors. The socks you all give, by the way, um, that you're all working through is basically for Connors and then for the Rogers County Jail. We've expanded our project where we also give socks at Bowley and then we do them at uh, Osage County at Pahuska. And uh, that and those are done through other churches and other groups. As a matter of fact, we've got a bunch of black churches that help in our outreach down at Bowley. So I'm, I'm real excited for the way the, the ministry is growing and your foundation of level. You're right there in the beginning days of it. So it's been a real blessing to see God use you. And who ever thought God could use a pair of socks to reach a prisoner? You know, it's funny. I heard a thing the other day on the news where they said they checked on what was the one thing that people that were homeless in the homeless centers wanted. What's the one thing they wanted above everything else? Guess what it was? A pair of socks. 
You may have heard that. Well, it's the same way in prison. Socks they get are terrible. They fall apart in the dryers, those big, huge dryers. They put them in. they got so much uh, synthetic fiber in them that it melts down and makes the socks scratchy and terrible, and they get holy and fall apart. And they're not spiritual holy, by the way. And so they, to get a good pair of, of cotton socks that we give out to them every year, most of the guys don't even run them through the, the, uh, the regular uh, laundromat. They uh, hand wash them and hang them up in their, their uh, units and uh, keep them, their socks, are, those socks are usually their ch go-to-church socks, and they keep them pretty white, beautiful, just to see. But see, that's something you're a part of. Matter of fact, I had several of the guys. We had last year, um, uh, in the, just till right now, beginning January, to right to this moment, we've had over 100 men come to Christ at Hominy. And it's been God's moving in a mighty way, and we're doing discipleship with it. Thank you. I give that to the Lord, and Father God, thank you for what you're doing there. And the guys, by the way, want me to tell you, thank you for all you do. As a matter of fact, I'll be delivering some socks to them uh, tomorrow. I'm loading up in my uh, uh, in a CRV about 1,400 pairs of socks to take up there. So be praying for that little trip, and then everything goes smooth. We'll have a good time. But the, I just want to tell you, the, the socks make a difference. The cost went up on us a little bit. It's $1.29 this year. As you know, as you go to the store, you know how everything's gone up. Well, it's gone up with that, too. But these are good socks. As a matter of fact, we bought enough for two years. I'm not going to ask you to give for those yet. That'll be next year, okay? But uh, we uh, reserved enough, I should say, for two years because we could get the good socks that they're not even going to be making anymore after this time. So uh, we're just looking forward to how God's going to use them. And if the Lord wants to come between now and then, it'll even be that much better. So... Listen, let me just have a word of prayer and thank you for what you're going to do, what God's going to do, the miracle he's going to create here today as he works through you. Let's pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father God, I thank you for these men and women. I thank you for their heart for you. And Lord God, I thank you for the, the ministry of this church and for Brother Rick and for the heart they have for you and your work in, in, the, in the jails and prisons. And I ask you to honor this offering today. And we just commit it to you and thank you for what the end result of all of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Is that good? You know, one of the things, that, yeah, go ahead and give him a hand, man, and what he's doing. And, you know, this, I mean, obviously it matters to the Lord. I thought it was interesting that this week I got this letter. We got, we actually, as a church, we got this letter in the mail. And um, if I get that thing to stay there, I wanted to read part of it to you. Um, it was uh, written by a young lady that's incarcerated in Rogers County right now. But she said this, I just wanted to thank you all. I miss coming to service. However, when I get out on April 23rd, 2022, I'd like to arrange a baptism. I'd like to be saved. I signed for my time and um, since, since drug court uh, wasn't an option again. But I see it as, a God, as God has plans for me, better plans. And by the grace of God, uh, this is the only incarceration I'll be doing. I'm considering this as my prison time. Once I get out, I'll have all this behind me. Uh, just court costs. My goal in life is I want to be able to speak about my story. My testimony uh, to prison ministry comes from a family that's been in prison. Growing up with mom and dad in prison, jail. I'm ready to break this cycle. If I can beat my fear and speak in front of bunches of people without crying like I am now, I'd like to uh, give a special thanks to Aaron and Janelle uh, in recovery. Their service touched my heart and how comfortable I feel walking in there. I want to be able to do what he does and speak the words of God. Uh, the serenity prayer I repeat in my head once and over uh, when I'm done. She went on to say, uh, you all are blessings to me. You are my home church uh, where I feel at home. Uh, I do request for prayer on my journey with God uh, at this time. When I was in this place, people had written me letters. So if anyone wants to write me, send me God's words. I'd love that. I don't really have anyone. I pray for my family. But letters have to be in black ink pencil uh, and uh, that type of thing. So if anyone wants to order me books or anything like that, I would really appreciate that. Um, thank, you know, uh, thank you. I'm super blessed. And then they give their name. God bless uh, from this person. And so I just thought that was cool. And so we are. We're going we're gonna to write her some letters again. Yeah. And, um, and so if you want to do that, if you'll call the church this week, we'll give you instructions. Because there's instructions on how those letters have to be written. And, you know, certain things that we have to do. But apparently this last time when she was in there and we sent out letters that she got some and it really spoke to her. But I'm just grateful to you guys. You know, we, I got to be a part of that when we gave out 
those socks and just to see, you know, what God was doing there and just how special that was. It was just such a neat thing in that. I want to share a couple of other things with you before we get into the message. One is, is that um, tonight, everybody say tonight. Tonight, our ladies have an event. It's going to take place at 6 o'clock. I'm going to read this. It says, we like to invite all the women to Cedar Point Women's event tonight at 6 o'clock. And uh, bring $5 with you. It'll, it'll take care of cocoa and cookies. Man, cocoa and cookies for $5, that's pretty good. So anyway, um, we'll have a great time of encouragement, worship, and fun. One thing we want to do leading into the holiday season is support and showcase the women in the church who have a business that they'd like to share with the women that attend, whether that be a product or service. It's not too late to feature your business. Show up early tonight to set it up. And uh, if you're a woman in the church that's interested in showcasing your business, if you're interested in the event in general, please contact Lori Roach or Sarah Tucker. Would you guys stand up real quick, Lori and Sarah? So anyway, this is Lori right here. She oversees our ladies' ministry. That's Sarah Tucker right there. She gives me a hard time. And so um, you can see them, see them after the church. And, and man, this is a great time to come, ladies. Come and be a part of that. It's going to be a great thing. It'll be just, you know, we just really want to encourage you. And a great time to just exchange ideas. It'll still be a time of ministry and the word and, and all sorts of things. But just a great time for the ladies. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, one is, is that tomorrow night we have recovery, and we have a lady that comes here named Mary Holabaugh, and she has a great story about the grace of God. She, had, she dealt with abuse, uh, sexual abuse as a little girl when she was growing up, and just how that impacted her story, but then she had an encounter with Jesus someday. So if you've never been to recovery, man, I'm just, I've heard Mary share her story. It's moving. It's powerful. And at the end, man, I'm grateful for God's grace. Come and be a part of that tomorrow night as well. Um, and so I believe that that is it. I want to say hi to everybody that's online that's engaged with us. Thanks for being a part of this and watching with us. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, well, grab hold of your Bibles and say this with me. Say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I declare this morning, my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll be taught the Word of God. And I'll never be the same again. Open up your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12, that's in the New Testament. If you're still learning your way around the Bible, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. The Old Testament's at the beginning. It starts with Genesis. The New Testament is way after that. It starts with Matthew. And Hebrews is in the New Testament. So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, keep going. First and Second Corinthians, keep going. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, keep going. First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, keep going. Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. Hebrews 12, we've been talking about prepare. In other words, to keep our lives prepared for the things that God's doing in them, what he wants to do. And again, I'm not talking about that this merits it. Because again, it's grace, it's undeserved, it's unmerited. But to, to also not miss those opportunities. Jesus stood over Jerusalem one time and he cried. And he said, man, if, if you just knew this time. He said to a woman at the well, helping that she would connect and discover. He said, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, it would change the questions you're asking. And so, and she did discover that. And so we want to be prepared for those moments, those seasons, those things that God does in our life. And so we're going to look at some, some of those things. We're going to call this message today, Travel Light. Now, I'll just tell you this much. That me and Tina both, when we travel a lot of times, that neither one of us are small packers. And so, I don't know if you are or not, but I mean, I just, I, I overthink things. I'm like, okay, I've got this pair of pants, and then you never know if something's going to happen to those pair of pants. I mean, for all I know, you know, that uh, I, I could, you know, I could leave them on the side of the road, because people do that with socks all the time, and so that's just possible, I guess. And so, and then, even though maybe I haven't worked out in six months, then I'll take my, my uh, gym clothes with me because today may be the day that I start working out again. And, and even though it's, you know, in the middle of December, I might go swimming, so I'm taking a swimsuit with me. I mean, just all of these things that I do, and I, I load my car up, and, you know, and then, and, uh, you know, and it takes up the back seat, and then we have a cargo area, and, and Tina's stuff takes all the cargo area plus some of the back seat, and so, and then a little bit of the floor of the front seat. And so then... And so then when we get there, I like dread getting there and checking in because I know that we're hauling out that, that luggage thing and we're going to put everything on there, plus we're carrying stuff, and I probably need an adjustment when I'm done. And I mean, it's just, it's just there's just so much to it, and it impacts the trip, it impacts the journey, just because we're carrying excess stuff. Amen. And the same thing is true for us in our walk with God, that, you know, we carry these things with us that are unnecessary, 
And so we're going to look at those things. How do we travel light spiritually to stay prepared for what God has for us? So we'll start with Hebrews 12. And let's look at um, verse 1. It says this, therefore. Now, in Bible school, they said anytime that there's a therefore, you got to find out what it's there for. And so in Hebrews 11, there's all of these people of faith, all these men and women that just trusted God. They weren't perfect. They had broken areas just like me and just like you, but they just trusted him with their things and with their life and with their relationships. And so it was kind of like a hall of fame of people that trusted. Some of them we know, some of them we know their names, some of them we don't, but God knows them. And so then it says, in light of this or because of this, therefore, because of them, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off. Everybody say strip off. Every weight. Say every weight. That slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. So he said, in light of these people that were before us, let, let's follow an example that they set. And they said, let's strip off the weight. Now, one of the weights that he mentioned specifically is sin. And sin would obviously be a weight. You know, disobedience to God, not doing what God has called us to do or told us to do. And that, that can really impede what it is, you know, how we get to where God has called us and and it can just impede our journey and impact our journey, make it more painful at times than it needs to be. And so that's one of the things. But there's other weights that may not necessarily be sin, but they're just weights. I looked this word up, and it was typically used in athletic events. The word that they used here was typically used in athletic events. The athletes would strip themselves from anything that would impede them in their event. Anything that would impede their ability to do their event the most effectively the most efficiently, uh, you know, at the highest level, they, they strip themselves of that. I remember being a kid in high school and just, you know, sometimes in the summer getting ready for football and I had these ankle weights and I would put them around my ankles and I would go out and run. And I was never known to be fast anyway, but man, when I put those ankle weights on, you didn't need a second hand to time me. You could have timed me with just the minute hand. I mean, it was just, it was horrible. And so I'd be out there just kind of running, you know, getting in shape or whatever. And then by the end of summer, when things were ready, I could take those weights off. And it was amazing how much easier it was to jog and get ready and prepare and do all of those things that you wanted to do to be ready. But I just realized this in all of us, in our lives, that those things that we hang on to that impede our ability. And certainly if it's sin, we want to get rid of that. To repent of it, to turn away from it. But there's other things too, right? I mean, I put some of these things down. That uh, What weights do you have in, What in, impede our life? They could be an attitude. An attitude that we carry. That impedes, that slows us down. From experiencing you know, the ministries and the things that, that God has given us and called us to do. Now, we don't get rid of these things so we'll be worthy. You know, a weight that I used to have was knowing me. I thought, well, I get good enough, then I can go and minister. I've known since I was a kid that I had some kind of call to, to ministry, to full-time ministry. And, I, you know, as I got older, it would be time, so I'd kind of like, well, maybe it's supposed to be this. But it always came back to that calling in my life. But a weight that I carried was, was that I was going to wait till I was good enough in order to do this. Guess what? I never got good enough. You know why? Because he didn't call me based upon his goodness. He called me based upon his grace. It was unmerited, undeserved favor. It wasn't given to me because I'm good. It was given to me because he's good. But the weight of that wrong thought hindered my entrance into ministry. So we could have an attitude or a thought. There could be, you know, relationships that, that, you know, that just have a place in our life that they shouldn't have. We could have misplaced priorities. These weights that we carry that slow us down, that make the journey harder than it needs to be. People say to me, well, I don't have to do this, you know, I don't have to do that. Well, you don't. But it sure makes the journey harder. I, I don't have to go to church, you know, you don't. I'm married, I don't have to go home. <laughs> it's 
sure makes marriage a lot harder. <laughs> you out there? <laughs> so, right, I mean, we have these things in our life that are just things that hang on to us, that cling to us. Or actually, they don't even cling to us, we cling to them. In order for us to, you know, to be prepared whenever God's moving in our life and he's doing things, to remove these weights, these thoughts, these attitudes, these mindsets, these these things that we carry with us that were never part of his plan to begin with. Let me ask you this question and don't answer it out loud. What weights are you carrying? What things do you have in your life right now that are making the journey harder than it needs to be? That are impeding you in your walk with the Lord? They're, they're slowing you down. It's not him. He's not slowing you down. He's waiting, he's waiting because he loves you. But to just deal with those things that, that we carry with us that are, they're excessive, they're unnecessary, and we have to turn loose of them. So number one is this, to be prepared and travel light, remove the weights from your life. Now, we're going to come back to Hebrews 12 in just a minute so you can hold your place there. But right now, let's go to 2 Timothy. It's a few books before Hebrews. 2 Timothy, the book before it is 1 Timothy. How about that, huh? So anyway, and it was written by a guy named Paul. It was a letter written by Paul to a young man named Timothy. Paul was mentoring him. Timothy was uh, called to the ministry. And actually, we believe by church history that he ended up pastoring a church in Ephesus. The book Ephesians that Paul wrote that letter to, we believe that Timothy ended up pastoring that church. It was one of the first mega churches of, our, of, the, of the church's day. It was incredible. And so... Paul's uh, writing to Timothy, preparing him for ministry. And so in this letter, he shares some things. So, and you, so when, you, when we read this, hear the relationship in it. Hear the, his father's heart towards him. Timothy, my dear son, verse 1, 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You've heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass him on to others. So he's telling Timothy, he says, hey man, be strong. Be strong through the grace that God's given you. You've heard me teach things. I've taught them to you. Now teach others so that they can teach more people. In other words, you know, continue to disciple and mentor. And then he goes on to say this. He said, endure. Everybody say endure. Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Endure suffering as a good soldier. The King James says, endure hardness. Now, I think it's interesting. It says, endure hardness. It doesn't say, become hardened. Because that can happen, right? We're going through hard times of being disappointed, hurt, let down. That our hearts can get hardened. And he didn't say for your heart to get hardened. He said, endure the hardness. And we can only do that through the grace of God and through the, through the Holy Spirit's help. To go through hard places and for our hearts to stay tender. Because a lot of times, man, I know my response is, in the hard places, I want to harden. Some people that carry a hardness about them, it's just a reflection of them going through hard times, and they went through them without the Lord's help, and so it hardened them. But we're not supposed to get hardened, we're supposed to endure hardness. Endure it. And it, would, it will make us stronger, but on the inside, our hearts stay tender. Well, then he goes this, he said, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please, everybody say please. They cannot please the officer who enlisted them. Now, my uncle was in the first service this morning. He was a veteran of Korea. My, my dad's passed on. He was a World War II veteran. Do we have any veterans in here today? Let me see your hands. Raise your hand if you would. Let's give them a hand and just say thank you, man. We're grateful. So they, they can tell you that when they get orders, you know, that they, when they were in the military, they, they couldn't get encumbered by things that would cause them to have to say no to the superiors. And so if you try to say no to your superiors, that doesn't work out well for you, right? Right, military people? It's like, 
yeah, I don't think I want to go there. You're like, oh, yeah, you're going. So, I mean, it would be one of those things like that. We lived in Clovis, New Mexico for 17 years, and Cannon Air Force Base was there. Now it's not an Air Force Base. It's a special ops base. But I remember we'd have people that came to the church, and we would love them, and they would be engaged in the community. But then those times would come where they'd say, man, we've got orders. We're going to go to this other place. In my heart, I'm like, man, I don't want you to leave. They're like, we don't want to leave either. And, and sometimes they'd try to put in to see if they could stay. But often, man, the response was, nope. And then sometimes they'd have to go on remotes where they would have to leave and leave their family, you know, in, in a place where they'd be cared for and that type of thing and go away for a year by themselves. They, they had to keep themselves untangled by things going on in their world. So when that moment came that they received that letter and they said, things are getting ready to change for you, that they weren't caught up and tied up in that. They couldn't get encumbered by that. And he said, don't, they don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And so this is what we have to remember. That you and I, we can get tangled up in so many things in our life. Caught up in so many things. And one of the great weights we carry is who we're trying to please. He said one of the ways that they stay free is that they remember, these soldiers remember who they're called, who they're responsible to whose voice they have to please. And for you and I as believers to stay, you know, one of the weights we can carry, we can be well-meaning and well-intended, but yet we can go along in our life and do everything we can, and yet we're trying to do, sometimes we spend the rest of our life trying to please every person around us, trying to make sure the people around us aren't unhappy, trying to make sure that they're not satisfied or settled. And we can be well-meaning and well-intended, and yet it can be a huge weight that we carry that gets in the way of what God wants us to do. I know there have been times in my life where the Lord was dealing with me about things, Decisions he wanted me to make, either personally for my own life or as a pastor. And at times I'm like, Lord, I don't want to disappoint this person. Or if I do this, they're going to leave the church. Or if I say this, they're going to leave the church. And man, it would weigh on me because I just didn't, I didn't want to hurt them. And then also from a personal standpoint, I didn't want to be rejected. And it became a, it became a weight on me. It became something that it impacted my journey. But Paul's telling this young man, Timothy, he's like, look, dude, you got to be willing to endure hardship. And you got to be, you got to understand this, you can't get tangled up with all these other things around you because it will impact and impede your ability to follow the one who you're responsible for. That we should recognize in our life that at the end of the day, that what matters most is not what I want, not what you want, but what Jesus wants. And so we have to keep that in mind. And I know different personalities are different. This is one of those that really speaks to me because I hate disappointing people. I don't want to hurt anybody. And especially, you know, and so sometimes, you know, as a leader, sometimes you have to make decisions that, you know, people aren't going to understand. You can't share everything you know. You can't tell them everything you know. And, and yet you love them, and they're going to be disappointed. They're going to be hurt, and they may leave the church. And, it's, and if, I'm care, if I'm not careful, I'll let the weight of that get in the way of what God has told me to do. If you're not careful, you'll let the weight of that get in the way of what God has told you to do. I think it's interesting, Jesus had one of these moments. He was with his disciples, and, and he, he was telling them the things that were getting ready to happen. Hey, I'm going to be given into the hands of sinful men. They're going to take me up, and they're going to, you know, they're going to crucify me. And Peter gets before him. He said, not so, Lord. Not so, Lord. This can't ever happen to you. And obviously, there had been a temptation for Jesus to not want to disappoint Peter. And even Peter, obviously, he loved the Lord, but also there were probably some personal things. He'd walked away from his business. He'd walked away from his security to follow Jesus. Hey, you didn't tell me this when you said, let's go, I'll make you fishers of men three years ago. You should have said, hey, this gig with me, it's about three years long. And then you're on your own, except you're really not on your own. And I love Jesus' response. He looked at him and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me, an offense. Now, I would not encourage you to ever call somebody Satan, especially if they're a person you live with. Well, Jesus did. Yeah, he's Jesus, you're not. And so, and there was a reason he was speaking to, the, there's a, obviously a spiritual influence behind there as well-meaning as Peter was. But Jesus just understood that as well-meaning as Peter was, that the enemy was trying to use that guilt, that control, that manipulation to keep him from going forward with what God had called him to do. And man, this this thing of trying to please every soul in our life, trying to please every voice that's around us, 
it becomes a weight. And it holds us back. And it makes us cautious. And sometimes causes us to withdraw or pull out from the plans that God has for us and from the journey that he's given us. Because we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to disappoint anybody. But part of traveling light is this. Remember who you are called to please. Remember who we're called to please. Remember whose voice matters to us in our life and in our world. So number two is this. We're going to travel light. Remember who we're called to please. All right, let's look at number three and we'll close with this. Go back to Hebrews 12, where we were a minute ago. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 14. Hebrews 12, 14. The very first word in there is work. Everybody say work. Work Work at living in peace with everyone. So we're called to live in peace. Did you know that it takes work to live in peace with people? How many of you have discovered that? Raise your hand. Don't look at the person next to you right now. It's not a good time to do that, okay? Yeah, sure. Man, he's, he's right. It takes work. It took work to go to church with you this morning. It takes work. It does, man. I mean, to do it. Well, I thought we were Christians. We are. That's why we work at it. If we weren't Christians, we wouldn't care. That's, yeah, thank you for those three hearty amens. Anyway, so, so we work and live in peace with everyone, and we work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other. So that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Then he says, watch out. Everybody say, watch out. Yeah. It's a, another, we could say, warning or caution. In other words, beware of this. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Now, I grew up, you know, as, uh, I grew up in Vertigris. And the place that I grew up in, when I, when I was a kid there, when we first moved out there, it was nothing but just hills, trees, you know, ponds and stuff like that. And so there was a bunch of just kind of just, I mean, it was, a, it was a kid place. And so, but you would come up to a fence sometimes or you'd be at a place where you'd see a sign that says warning. And, and sometimes they were telling you that because they wanted you to know that you're not supposed to be here. But other times they were telling you that because they were trying to make you aware of something, a danger that you may not be aware that was there. And bitterness is like that. I've shared with you before that one of the great struggles in my life was in a season where I got bitter, not with one person, but with two people in my world over different issues. They were unconnected. And it was amazing. I, I, it was one of those things that I knew that I knew that I wasn't, I knew that I was susceptible to certain issues, but I always knew, I always kind of had in my mind how dangerous unforgiveness is. And I thought, well, that's an area I don't struggle in. And, and that's why you have to watch out because bitterness is so subtle. The Bible refers to it as a root. In other words, it's taking place underneath the surface. You can't even tell it's there when it's working. And we kind of it kind of festers. And it simmers. And so it's there and it's, it's growing. And then here's something else about bitterness. It, it digs itself there in that spot. And so bitterness is so subtle that it's working underneath the surface. And oftentimes, you know, we're not dealing with it and we justify the things that are going on. And it's just so deceptive. And the Bible even calls it poisonous. And, and so it poisons our soul. It gets us twisted on the inside. And it's so poisonous, it leaks. And it leaks into the lives of other people. It says that we can defile many by sharing it and by talking about it. And it plants itself there. It holds us in that moment. But every time we try to move forward for what God wants to do here, somehow we're stuck in this moment because that bitterness just has us anchored in that place. I've been there. I've been there. And by the time I realized that just like a vine could tangle things up, it had me tangled and caught in this trap. But I was so deceived, I didn't even realize it was a trap. And it impacted my judgment. It allowed me to do things that I knew in any other time if I was healthy that that's not okay. But bitterness brings with it a justification of the choices that we make, of the conversations that we have, of the things that we do, of the way that we treat people around us. And it poisons us. And as we travel in this journey, it's impossible to not experience disappointment with people that are close with us, with people that go to church with us. 
but there's something about it that we don't understand that, then it subtly creeps over our heart like a vine does over a sidewalk, like a vine does up the side of a house, slowly does that, and before you know it, you're entangled in it. You Pastor Rick, how do I get rid of it? How do you get rid of the root of bitterness? With the acts of forgiveness. It's the thing that causes us to be freed up, to extend that. You know, one of the challenges is sometimes if it's just an event or a moment, sometimes as painful as those are, they're easier. The real challenge is then when it's people in our life that are a part of our world that hurt us on a regular basis. That how do we do that? What is it we do in there? You know, and there's so many things that, that we can do, you know. And, but one of the things I do realize is that sometimes with people that our disappointment or bitterness is given opportunity when we place expectations on people that they are either unable or unwilling to meet. You know, when the third service is over today, we're going to serve Sonic corn dogs, and they're going to be really good, and so we'll be excited about that. And I could, I could be hungry after that, and I'm like, I, you know, that Sonic corn dog was really good, and I'm kind of hungry for a steak. And I could drive to Sonic and say, hey, I just had one of your corn dogs a little while ago. I want a steak now. And I like a T-bone steak. I'm like, well, you know, sir, we don't serve T-bone steaks here. Okay, what about a filet mignon? No, we don't do that either. How about a New York strip? No, we don't do that. And I could be on that speaker, and I could yell and scream at the person on the other end. I want a steak. How dare you not give me a steak when I need a steak? But the truth of the matter is, is that I can go to Sonic every day and put all sorts of expectations, and I'll never leave there with a the steak. Do you know why? They're not equipped to give me one. And so many times we live with expectations of people that, again, from just for whatever reason, they're either unable or unwilling. And sometimes we just have to recognize that the expectations I need to live with are the ones that I put on myself and that God puts on me, and that's to love people unconditionally. Does that mean we have to trust everybody? No. But I know this, I know not just because the scripture says it, but I've lived it. That bitterness will grab hold of you and it will poison your soul and it will twist you and it will hold you onto that moment where you never trust anybody, you're never healthy, you're never completely healthy. You start well and never finish. You never stay. It anchors you in that place. You never get beyond it. And it's such a weight that we carry. And it's a painful weight because we get to relive that offense. That wound never heals because we stand in the way of the Holy Spirit having access to that place so that his presence can be healing to our hearts and to our souls instead of being locked in that moment. You want to travel light? Don't get tangled up in bitterness. It's poison to you. It's slow poison. So it's taken its toll on you, and by the time you realize it, damage has been done. Remove it through forgiveness. Through the help of God, let the Holy Spirit deal with you. And unentangle you, set you free from the grasp that that has on your life. Sometimes people say, man, I just feel like I'm just kind of stuck. One of the places I would begin with is that, am I bitter towards anybody? Have I got unforgiveness in my life? Because it holds you there. It imprisons you. So he said, watch out. Beware, warning, caution. Because you, be, you may be going along and things may be happening. Before you know it, you may be unaware that this is a trap, a pitfall. Something looking to tangle you up. This root that's taking place. And instead we carry the grace of God wherever we go. So number three is this, don't get tangled up in bitterness. I want us to, just, I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes for just a minute. Man, let's just spend a moment with God. Let him do in us whatever it is that he wants to do. As we prepare, our, keep our lives prepared for him, just like the people that he used, you know, the wise men or the shepherds or people like that, that on that moment in history when he was reaching out to them, that he wanted to reveal his plan and his purpose and make them a part of what was going on. You know, who knows who else he dealt with, who else he spoke to. But maybe their lives are so entangled with bitterness or they forgot who they were supposed to please. Or they just carried weights that were never meant for them. 
So let's just spend a moment with God. Let him speak to your heart. Lord, we're yours. Father, thank you for the great goodness of God. Jesus, I'm grateful to you, and I'm, I'm grateful that you're in this moment with us. And Lord, we want to stay ready. Stay ready, stay prepared. We're willing to face hardship. We're willing to, to go through those seasons, Lord, because at the end of the day, it's, it's your voice that we want to listen to. It's, it's your heart that we want to please. I know you love us regardless. There's not anything we can do to make you love us more. Lord, we have a free will to follow you or not. I want to follow you. Lord, I want to lay aside any weights, any thoughts, any attitudes, any disappointments. I don't want to live my life trying to please every person in it. Lord, I want to be free of any bitterness that would try to grab hold of me. That would want to dig its thorns into me. And I pray that for each one of us, Jesus. That we would travel light. You said, come to you. For your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. As we endeavor to walk with you. Before we go, man, if you're in here today, if, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never received him as your Savior, ask him to be part of your life. If you want to do that today, man, I want to pray for you. Now, I know there may be people in here that all this is kind of new to you, and I, I get that. Thank you for coming. We're glad you're here. And I, w- I would encourage you to kind of, you're like, I really don't get what's going on. Right? Well, keep coming. And I believe that as time goes on, that you know, the Lord will help you, and, and you're free to ask questions. We welcome those. But I'll just tell you this, one of the things that the Bible says about God is that God is love. Doesn't say that he doesn't just say that he loves, but he is love. And he is. But also God is uh, he He's just. And so whenever I, I've sinned or you sinned, we've sinned. That he just can't let that go. It's not it's not okay. And that could, that thought can be kind of scary because it's like, oh my gosh, what's he gonna do to me? Well, here's the good news. Is that the judgment that my sin and your sin, that our sin deserved, Jesus came and all of that was put on him. And he took all of that judgment for us so that God could continue to be just. And so that you and I could be innocent. And so when we receive Jesus, we we receive the forgiveness that comes with it. We become children of his sons and daughters of God. We become that and then Oh, do we receive him and we become that, but he restores your innocence. So if you've never received him before and you want to do that, I want to pray for you. Second of all, if you're here and you say, Rick, I've done that, but honestly, man, I've gotten off track. I'm not where I used to be and I'm not where I want to be and I want to get back to that place, can I? Absolutely, you can. You say, well, how do you know? Because, man, I've been where you are. I've been you. I've gotten off track before. And I can tell you with confidence that he will restore you. He will forgive you. He'll free you from shame and condemnation and guilt. So if that's you, if you want to recommit your life, rededicate your life, I want to pray for you. And then lastly, if you're here and you say, you know, sometimes I think I'm saved. I think I'm a Christian, but other times I struggle with what if I'm not? And it creates some concern, maybe even some anxiety in me. Well, I believe you can know. I I, I want to pray for you today so that you leave here with a confidence, knowing that you're His. So for any one of those three things, whether to give your life to Jesus for the very first time or to recommit your life to him 
or just to leave here knowing that you're his, if that's you on any one of those three things, I, I want to pray for you today. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, just so I know who I'm praying for, just so I know I'm praying for, if, if that's you, would you just raise your hand and hold it up there for just a minute? Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah, a bunch. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I see that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to join these? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each person that's raised their hand. I thank you, Lord, that you love them. And Father, if this is their very first time, I pray that in this moment they'll become a new creature in Christ. That old things will pass away and all things will become new. That their innocence will be restored. And Father, if they're recommitting their life, I thank you that you'll restore the joy of their salvation. That they'll leave here connected to the plan of God. Walking with them. Both groups will leave here. The first and second group will leave here free of shame. Free of condemnation. No guilt. Forgiven. Yours. And lastly, Lord, for anyone that's struggling with, am I really a Christian? Am I really your child? I pray that when they leave here today, they would know they're yours, not because they feel like it, because some days I don't feel like it. And I pray they would know they're yours, not because they always act like it, because you know I don't always act like it. But I pray their confidence would be in this, that whoever calls upon Jesus will be saved. So that when they leave here today, that their confidence won't be in how good they feel or how good they are, but their confidence will be in what you've promised what Jesus has done for us and that's enough and so we thank you for that in Jesus name now look man I prayed for you and that's good because God loves you so personally and wants to have a relationship with you so personally not a religion but a relationship where you and he talk I want to lead you in a prayer where you're talking to him and I want you to be able to be bold and not hindered and passionate in your praying and since we're for you and we want you to know you're not in this alone I'm going to ask everybody in here to repeat after me, but if you raise your hand, you make this yours as you boldly declare this. Let's all say this. Say, Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I know what that means. That means I'll do what you say to the best of my ability. I surrender my will to yours. I receive you as my Savior. Now, thank you for dying on the cross for all my sins. And I believe with all my heart that you were raised from the dead so I could be forgiven. I call upon you now and ask you to forgive me and to live in me. And I thank you for forgiving me and saving me and loving me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's give them a hand. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Well, man, I'm so excited for you. And just we're going to give you some information here in just a minute. If you'd like some more information, like what's the next step, we're going to give that to you in just a moment. Hey, I want to let you know, too, next Sunday when we start the service, we're going to do kind of, a, kind of a really cool thing. So if you can be on time next week, you don't want to miss the first few minutes of the service. It's going to be pretty awesome. I think you guys will like it. It'll be a treat. I'm going to turn this over to Pastor David. Let's give him a big hand as he comes out here. Pastor Rick comes out, preaches an entire sermon, and says, you should clap for me. I love that guy. <laughs> hey, um, if you raise your hand today, I want to tell you this. This is one of the most important things in the life of our church, to help people have a real relationship with Jesus. And if you raised your hand today, my advice to you is this. Don't keep it a secret. Tell someone. When you keep it a secret, the enemy will work on you and tell you you made the wrong decision. Tell someone. Let us help you in your, in your struggles, in your journey, in your new life with Christ. And one of the ways you can do that is if you'll fill out one of these information cards. And I'm going to ask every family in here, if you'll grab one of these information cards from the seat back in front of you and begin to fill that out for your family. If this is your first or second time, you can mark that 
on the front and just say, hey, I'm visiting, let us know that. If you raised your hand today on the back, there's plenty of room for you to share that with us and let us know that you've made a commitment to Christ and let us be in prayer with you during that. And then you can just take these cards and drop them in the offering buckets as they go by in here in just a moment. We also, if you raise your hand, we have a gift for you. We have a Bible and some next steps to help you in your journey. We have a group who's going to be right over here under this screen right after church, and they want to pray with you and be a part of your decision. If you have, even if you didn't raise your hand, you can come over and be a part of that prayer. You can go to cedarpoint.church and, um, and visit our growth track and find out about your own special giftings and how you can put them to work here in our church and here in our community. So we just ask that you be a part of all of that. And now as we move into our time of offering, there's a couple of ways that you can participate in offering. One is we'll put a QR code on the on the screen and you can put your smartphone and your camera and you can zoom in on that and it will take you to the link or you can go to cedarpoint.church. If you're watching online right now, you can go to cedarpoint.church and you can give that way. Or if you're here in the room with us and you'd like to give, you can just drop that in the offering buckets as they go by here in just a moment. You know, when we started this church, I wasn't here yet, but from the beginning, this church has prayed that we would be the church that our community would turn to when they needed help. And that has happened over and over again. Recently, RSU reached out to us, Roger State University, and said, would you mind helping us support our students during finals week? It's a really stressful time. And we said, yes. And how do you support students and make them feel loved? You give them food. And so we did that. Um, and we, we gave hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pancakes, pounds and pounds and pounds of bacon, everything you could put on them, everything to go along with them, because we wanted to show these students that they're loved. Our, our Love Lifters group has the dogs that visit the nursing homes. They brought them out because there are students who live in the dorms and are far away from their own pets and, you know, miss them during the semester and had the opportunity to love on these dogs. And while we're feeding them, while they're petting the dogs, we as a church have the opportunity to let them know that their Savior and God and us as individuals love them. And that picture right there is somebody saying, thank you, Cedar Point, for providing these pancakes. Now, what I didn't know when we signed up for it, I kind of did, but, you know, I was reminded, is um, we would kick this off every night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of last week. It began at 9 p.m. and ended at 1 a.m. Now, why? Because that's prime time for young adults and college students. And so we committed, we said yes, we will be there, and we served hundreds of people what I consider to be a bajillion pancakes. And how can we do that? Because of your giving. How can we have the reputation of being the church in our community that will say yes? Because of your giving. And we were able to do that this last week because of your giving. So let's pray for that right now. God, thank you so much for this church, for this body of believers who, who know that there are people yet to be reached in our community, that we not hold all of um, our treasures inside the walls of this church, but we go out into our community. God, thank you for giving us opportunity to speak about you in the lives of community members. God, thanks for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for those who gave, who allowed us to do this. Thank you, God, for those who showed up and served in the middle of the night to let these young adults know God loves them. God, we just ask a blessing on today's gifts and these givers. In Christ's name, amen. Hey, thanks for spending part of your weekend with us here at Cedar Point. I've got just a few announcements for you and your family. Ladies, we have an event just for you tonight at 6 p.m. And if you're in need of doing some last minute Christmas shopping, you'll wanna be at this event as we have vendors signed up to be there tonight. The cost is $5 to enter and the doors open at 6 p.m. We hope to see you there. On Christmas Day from 2 to 4 p.m., we'll be celebrating a gift of Christmas, which provides a traditional Christmas experience for anyone who may not have one otherwise. 
We're still receiving donations for this event. And if you're interested in volunteering, be sure and email us at info at cedarpoint.church. We'll be starting our 21 days of prayer Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 on January 2nd. We'll have more details for you to come. Thanks again for spending part of your weekend with us here at Cedar Point. We hope you'll stay up to date with everything going on around here on our Facebook and Instagram. I have a couple of things to make you aware of. For those of you who are planners, and my wife knows who she is, um, on Christmas, the day after Christmas, on the 26th, on that Sunday, we're only going to have two services, just our 902 and our 1032, so be in planning for that as if you're arranging your schedules. We only have two services that day, and next week, please, please, please be in the room right when service starts, because we do have a surprise for you. I'm not supposed to say what it is. But you better be here on time. It's going to be fantastic. We love you. Go have a great week.